Hi everyone, she's Seb here and we are back for another Fluent Materializer tutorial. Uh, today we are going to talk about local mask and how to add details to your model on specific places. So Fluent Materializer is uh, mainly working with uh, procedural material, procedural uh, impact and imperfection as you can see here, but sometimes you need to add uh, details to a specific place and uh, this is where the local masks are, are uh, coming handy. So here I have a setup and I'm going to explain how to make it and how to use the different settings to reproduce this kind of result. So first of all in Materializer you're going to need to add a local mask. So how to do that uh, you're going to need to press F and here, under masks, you have a local. This will automatically uh, select the empty, so this big arrow, and we're gonna be able to move it where we want. So if we press G and then hold control, it stick to the surface where we want, and then we can just scale it down a bit because this will be a little bit too big. And if we click again on the object, we now have a new node with the mask. So if I plug this here, this will create automatically, let me unplug this. This will create automatically a mask that is round and uh, faded on uh, the borders. So that's the basic of it. And we can basically uh, plug in a texture. So Let's, for example, choose the crunch. If I plug the texture, now we have a more random and more realistic mask. And remember that if you move this around, this will move the mask. So that's pretty handy that we can place it wherever we want. So I can remove this one. This was an old one. And uh, let's go back to the object. So that's pretty nice, but for now it doesn't really help us. Uh, as you can see, it's not really working uh, very well. And the reason for that is because uh, the white point here is not uh, white enough. So we're going to need to add a math node to actually uh, multiply the results. And uh, here, if you choose multiply and then add number, make it whiter. So uh, this is a true white and not a gray. So here we can see the difference now. Uh, that's pretty cool, but usually when you have a paint that went away because it is scratched, you have like the layer of the paint. You can see the layer of the paint. And uh, to do that, I used the bump node so if you actually plug the outputs of the multiply here into a bump node and then use the normal into the layer that is actually uh, here where you have your mask plugged in, you can have this result. Um, that's pretty cool, but it's still not uh, what we want because Right now it's a little bit uh, destroyed. You might want that, uh, but I would like to have like a clean surface where just the paint is uh, scratched. So to do that, we're gonna need to actually add another matte node. So you can click on this one and Shift D to duplicate and place it after the multiply. This is very important. Um, and then select the greater than here. This will uh, make it a little bit uh, invisible and to see more what we are doing we're going to shift click on this one and see the outputs. So if you reduce this you're going to see the difference here. I found it uh, working with 0.15 and uh, to make it a little bit more like this is the only the borders of the mask because right now 
uh, this is, you see that there is uh, too many details here and here. So to make it a little bit realistic, um, I'm going to change here the details. And the details, if I put, for example, six, now it's a little bit more uh, random stuff. And uh, this is working a little bit better. So, so that's pretty cool. Um, you can also change uh, the coverage if you want to make it a little bit more destroyed. And we have now the effect that I'm looking for. Uh, you can see here the borders are quite smooth. And this is the details that we change here. So if you increase the details, this will increase the borders of your mask. Now in the local mask, we have some scale adjustment here. Um, I, I usually use this, the, the S key to scale uh, the main, like on all the direction. And then for the local direction, I use it here. So if you increase or decrease the scale on X, Y, you can see now that this is stretching along the axis of this row. Um, I might rotate it to be along the edge here. And yeah, you can just play with it and uh, that's it pretty much. Um, the thing is you might uh, need to play also with the contrast and uh, the contrast of the mask depending uh, on the result that you want. For example, if I increase the, ma the contrast to the maximum, it will only be the borders of the mask. Let's see, as you can see, it's pretty uh, straight uh, borders. Now uh, you can just tweak it and see uh, what you prefer. So yeah, that was it for uh, uh, the mask tutorial. I hope you like it. I use it in all of my uh, renders now. Uh, it's pretty cool to add details everywhere you want. And uh, yeah, that's it for this tutorial. So see you on the next one.